Hello, wonderful people. Welcome back to my channel, The Teacher's Best Friend. And this is Mary Lou Areño. So for today's episode, I'm going to share with you some tips on classroom organization. So this is very timely because uh, most schools are going back to on-site instructions and it is best to organize your classroom to support success on your students. So let's begin. So first let's talk about the main points of classroom organization. What are the things that you need to know or the main points in organizing your classroom? So first, a classroom must have a positive atmosphere and it is safe for your students. And of course, the classroom should maximize learning. Number three, it should minimize behavior problem. Although we're not talking about classroom management, we're talking about classroom organization, it is important to consider how to minimize behavior problem in organizing your classroom. And of course, the last one is maximize teaching opportunity in such a way that you will be efficient and avoid wasting time, okay? So classroom set up. So you see uh, the picture, uh, there's a beautiful classroom. It's an ideal classroom actually. It's uh, so bright and um, spacious. And I know every teacher is uh, hoping and wishing to have this kind of classroom where they can move around and have enough space. And remember, classroom is there for your teaching and for your students' learning. That is something we need to consider always when organizing classroom. For you to teach efficiently or you are comfortable in moving while teaching and for your students to learn in, in, in your uh, classroom, okay? So let's talk about some of the, the tips that uh, we can find in order to have a positive and safe classroom. How are you going to do that? First, you need to consider that your classroom is welcoming. It means uh, the decorations, the visuals that you put on your wall are very welcoming. Like when students see them, they enjoy looking at it. They enjoy the colors, the visual. They don't have a dull color and even the color of your room it should be welcoming. It's, it's not so dark and yet it is not so bright like neon colors. So take that in, con in consideration that your classroom is welcoming. And, on, and also the reason for the classroom to be welcoming is the teacher. You should always have that smile and show your students that you welcome them in your classroom. And another uh, way to uh, have a safe and positive classroom is to have some furniture that are students friendly. Okay, so your furniture must match or uh, appropriate for the age group of your students. So little kids, of course, they have to have cute and little furniture and big kids, they don't have, they don't like too fancy they don't like like childish decorations. So you have to match with your student, with your group of students. Furniture should be student friendly, okay? And um, chemicals and other dangerous items must be labeled and kept. Keep them in a locked cabinet. Even you are teaching big kids or small kids, anything that are poisonous, anything that are harmful, harmful chemicals must be kept away from the reach of the children or your students. And uh, ensure also that your exit doors, let's say you have two doors or one door, make sure they have clearance. Do not put cabinets near your door, do not put chairs, do not put anything that can block the way. And this is not just for safety of like bumping yourself or your students. It is also in case of emergency 
the exit doors are cleared and you can easily go out or exit. And how are we going to maximize learning? How are we going to set up our classroom or organize our classroom in order to maximize learning? So first, we must arrange our desk in a way that best suits our students' needs. Okay, like for example, uh, you have diverse students in your classroom. You have students with special needs and some they have students in a wheelchair or students that have physical disabilities. So those students must be positioned in such a way that they, uh, when they move, they can easily access the things they need and um, they have enough space to move around if they are in a wheelchair, things like that. So you need to fit your desk arrangement to the needs of your students. And uh, remind, that, uh, remind yourself that you should have a view of all your students. Let's say you have 20 students in the classroom and you're standing in front, make sure each individual student has a view like you can see their face, you can see where they are. And this is important, especially with the little ones, you know, the little kids. You have to have a view of them so that you'll see what they're doing. And at the same time, you have to make sure that students can see the teacher as well. They can see you. So when you arrange your desk, make sure that everybody, you see your students and they see you as well, okay? there should not be like one student is covered by another student. I think those are like the old ways of positioning the desks in the olden days, like they arrange them in a row. And then sometimes if a big kid is seated in front, you cannot see the little kid behind. So you have to be creative on how to arrange your desk to see everyone. And at the same time, they need to see you as well as a teacher. And there should be an easy access to materials and resources. Like, like, for example, you have in the picture bins of different materials like pencils, crayons, scissors, uh, papers, and all those paints. Um, if you have little kids, your cabinets should be shorter so that kids can be independently reach out for the things they need. And at the same time, uh, it's also easy for you, like when you need those resources, you can just easily get them and put them on their desk. So easy access to all your materials and supplies. And how are we going to minimize behavior problem? How are we going to do it in classroom organization? So first, Vest should not be placed in front of windows or near the doors. Why is that? So as we all know, if it is near doors, you know, when kids are passing by or anyone walking on the corridor or hallway, the tendency of your students is to look and see what's happening there and who's walking outside and they get distracted, okay? And if it is a window and they can see what's happening outside, their tendency is to look outside the window instead of look at you and listen to you. So the, we should not place the desk near windows or near the doors because those have so much distractions, okay? They will lose their attention. And mind also, how you assign seating. And I know veteran teachers, they know this, especially uh, if they know the students uh, in the school from the previous grade level, they already know who should be together and who should not be sitting together. So we have to mind those uh, strategy and we need to also match sometimes personality of the students. A good example is, uh, let's say there is one student who always, uh, you know, asking for help or 
sometimes uh, restless and all that, you do not seat another student of the same personality. You should uh, assign someone who is quite calm so that there is a tendency for that calm student to influence his seatmate. And I hope it's not the other way around, okay? So you have to match according to personality, according to how they, like uh, the chemistry of the students, especially when they're doing group work, okay? And um, make sure it's not uh, perfect at first, but you can always rearrange if you find something that needs to address later. So tips on maximizing teaching opportunity. So when I say maximizing teaching opportunities, like your classroom organizations should support your teaching. It's like, you don't make yourself or give yourself a hard time moving around the classroom. It's because it's not arranged properly and it's clattered, it's not organized and all that. So what are we going to do? Bins are always the best, like what it's shown in the picture. You can get those from a dollar store or from a you know, there are some markets that sells those kind of beans and for, for um, affordable amount, you can use those for organization. You can assign one bean per student and they can put their notebooks there or whatever uh, supplies that they wanted to leave in the school. And it's the same thing. If you can organize all your supplies, like put all the crayons together, scissors, glue and all that. So beans are teacher's best friend in organization. And I know that, huh? And, you know, sometimes we cannot avoid that we are uh, missing classes or missing school because we have some important appointment like doctor's appointment or you're sick. So make sure you have a substitute teacher folder. So anytime you're gone, there is a folder for whoever is going to sub your class and everything that should happen for the week at least, they can see that. Like for example, they saw this is your lesson on a Monday and you're gone on a Tuesday. They know where to pick up so that uh, a day is not wasted when everything is prepared and uh, we can maximize learning for that even though you're gone for the day, okay? And Teachers, you know, sometimes they collect junks for projects. They collect those toilet paper, the, the one inside the rolls. They collect empty jars, uh, anything, bottles, and they convert that to something uh, educational. They make projects, they make use of those. So you can put a big bin or some bins and you can start collecting those junks, they, those are junks, but they are treasures, I tell you, for teachers, so that when you need them, they will come handy. And keep a mailbox, you know, like um, you can put individual mailbox on your wall, and then instead of uh, giving homework or assignment, distributing paper every day, one by one, you can put those uh, assignments or any letters or any um, letter or note that you would like to send to parents on those mailbox. Let's say you have Johnny in the classroom. So you put all uh, the papers of Johnny there, what she needs to work on for the day. So you don't keep on um, passing paper. And sometimes those uh, are, it takes time as well, collecting and passing paper. You can teach your students to get their assignment from their mailbox and at the same time, submit the finished assignment in their uh, mailbox as well. And at the end of the day, you can just go and check the mailbox, okay? And there should be a mailbox for teacher also. And then keep students information handy. Like, of course, we always, as teachers, we post, uh, we have a birthday corner, okay? So um, that's good. 
we have to know the birthdays of our students. We have to um, keep those information, the contact information of their parents in case you need to call them for something, some questions or emergency, their addresses if you need to mail a letter or uh, for now, since it's a technology period or era, uh, we don't do the snail mails, we do emails, okay? And it's good to know the names of the parents as well. And uh, another important thing that you need to know are the medical condition of your students. Are they taking medications? Are they allergic to something? Things like that. So those are some important tips so that you can maximize teaching opportunities, okay? And I thank you for listening. I know some of these topics that I presented today for veteran teachers are something that you already know, but it's not, you know, it's not bad to refresh. And for the newbies, good luck to all of you. And I wish that you will organize your classroom in such a way that you are going to have a successful uh, learning experience for your students. So thank you so much and have a wonderful day. And for those who haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. So you get notification whenever I publish a new uh, video. And most of my video are for supporting teachers for professional development. So if you have any topic in mind that you would like to suggest, just don't forget to comment and um, put them down below and I will make a point to address those topics, okay? So good luck to all of you wonderful teachers for this school year. May, may we all be safe, okay? Thank you and bye.